everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Jagged Edge. Ian here along with Chris. What's up? Uh, we're gonna, you know, do a uh, little little pat pat on the back here. Fiftieth, fiftieth uh, episode. Uh, so exciting that we had to do the fiftieth episode twice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> happy, happy fifty to us for Jagged Edge. Um, yeah, we uh, we did this last week, and then we're just like, you know what? That was awesome. Let's do it again. <laughs> It's like it's like a roller coaster you don't want to get off. Uh, except this it had, is... had nothing nothing to do with audio errors or anything. No, no, no. Why 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 would that happen? <laughs> why? No, it it was bound to happen sooner or later. Quite honestly, it, it was it was. We uh, uh, hinted at this in another one of the rev- uh, reviews, the Annihilation review. Uh, had a bit of a an audio issue, an audio crash, to the point where it was just uh, not usable. Um, it, it, it's, it's one of those annoying situations where you capture a stream of audio and you have everything, but, uh, you have either one of the voice channels distorted or, or you, it's too choppy throughout things like that. So just decided to ax it, but, but, and you know, I mean, we deal with my voice on a weekly basis too. So you already know that the bar is pretty low. So <laughs> if it was unusable, if it was unusable, then it was really bad. See, so you say that the irony because the worst part of that was was actually on my end. I had like this. Um, uh, it's the way my pickup pattern worked. It got really choppy. Uh, so uh, literally, the response section was like this, and I quote, "Yeah, I, uh, 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 yeah, no, right." So when my voice is the highlight of the audio, no, it's it's time to do something else. <laughs> oh so, man, I know how I sound on these shows. Sooner or later, we'll get it right. We used to we did a podcast before, and the settings were fine. I sounded fine. This is I have such a low voice that when it's altered, it doesn't sound the best. So, <laughs> well, you can hear different variations of it in in other shows that we've done, or when I've done one by myself, where um, the settings are different. So I, I I do sound sometimes drastically different just because of that. Maybe we just need to get you on helium. Call it even. That would be funny. <laughs> that would be funny. Well, I'm, you know, I'll have to try that sometime. Well, anyways, so we've got some we got some notes that we want to touch on from last week. Yeah. But uh, we got a lot of show here. So, um, all right, I'm going to shut up. Yeah. Here we go. So quick rundown. Uh, the thing again, as Chris noted, that we're not going to lose from last week are some of our uh, our biggest highlights of uh, news we ran across. First off, it's Black Panther, which is kicking ass and taking names still in the box office. Uh, this has shattered uh, multiple records, uh, both for uh, domestic releases, February releases, uh, which is usually sort of an off-season uh, for movies uh, altogether, especially a, a big production like this, a superhero movie coming out uh, for uh, DCU. <laughs> I said, wow, DCU, Marvel films. <laughs> um, this has been an absolute blockbuster. Uh, honestly, this is up there now between uh, Dark Knight Rises and uh, Avengers Age of Ultron overall, which is just unreal. Uh, and uh, it, this is oh, th- This is due. I think this this is a movie that certainly deserves it. It's got everything you love about Marvel, all the action, uh, with the really, really cool spin uh, culturally in the way Wakanda is shown here. So uh, monster stuff. This is still raking it in big time with the 15-day domestic total of Four hundred fifty-one point seven million. So, congratulations to Black Panther. Uh, moving right on, it was in uh, WB DCEU. There was an announcement that Josh Whedon is no longer going to be directing Batgirl. Uh, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of shakeups to the DCEU executive staff. Uh, look, it, it it comes down to something that we've echoed a lot here. Just f- forget all the noise, blow past that. Just 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 fix it. It's it, it, it's fine. Just take... I love how you put on how you put the nice spins on there. <laughs> Just fix it. Work it out. Work you wouldn't. It out. Need, I remember a few weeks ago you wouldn't even quote the guy who actually dropped the f bomb. You wouldn't even quote it. He's so nice. <laughs> does, your, does your mom listen? Does she listen? Like, he's a good boy. That other guy, he's got a potty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> eh, somebody's already gone there. I didn't figure I'd cover it twice. So, but um. Yeah, and there was also some um, some shakeup here. I think uh, with uh, Josh Week. Now there was that note um, about a. Uh, I, I could have the could have the wrong film. And, and help me out here real quick. We had had um, uh, for Justice League. 
Uh, but this was this was Zach. I thought he had stepped away due to family issue, but it wasn't that at all. Oh, we talked about that the show prior. I thought I thought we we covered that. Yeah, that, that's part of this whole yeah. that's part of this whole shakeup that's happening. So it is part of a chain right. of uh, patterns we're seeing, and it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. So, yeah. As for just, uh, just uh, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, please. So other movies out there, we got the D and D movie. Uh, there's some more info in that. Dungeons and Dragons. This is set for a 723, 2021 release. Uh, this is going to take place in the Forgotten Realms, and it looks like the studios uh, for this one changed from uh, WB over to Paramount, uh, along with uh, also uh, Hasbro's new All Spark Studios for doing the production behind this. D and D is one of the longest running bastions of nerddom that I can possibly think of. Uh, I used to watch the cartoon a little bit myself, and but I. Mm. Uh, ran a campaign or so, but I don't have vast familiarity with it. But uh, still, oh, cool. Um, actually, get it right. Get it right. Get it right. I, and ironically, I'm a little more excited for this than I am the other movie announcement. A bit of a surprise that we looked into uh, for our last show. That's Sonic the Hedgehog. There's a live action uh, Sonic movie in the works. Of course, that's live action blended with CG. We're not going to have hedgehogs rolling around somebody's hand flinging them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I I'm betting money that this they will not get this right. No, I. You know how the adaptation process goes, uh, video games to movies. Even as a big time Sonic fan, as as I am, uh, I've, I've loved it ever since Sonic One on Sega, uh, the Game Gear games, the whole deal. I played it growing up. I love Sonic Mania, everything. I'm really really skeptical about this, and it's really sad. You know, I, I'm two for two on things I really like getting an announcement of some sort of movie and then I'm being really eh, unsure about it. One is Alita and now uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. So, Oh, really? You're seriously questioning Alita? I I am. Uh, not to the degree I'm questioning Sonic. I, I am I am standing outside of the room on Sonic right now. Alita's one oh, I'm... Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, Alita's one I'm, I'm willing to say yeah, I, I'm, I know I will see this regardless. I am definitely going to give this a chance because I love the source material so much. But, uh, but Sonic's your guy. That, I mean, him and Mega Man. That's your that's your twosome oh, right there. They're my jam. Right? They're my jam. So yeah. that's that's a little, uh, little hedgehog and a little robot man. <laughs> uh, like that, but what? no, no. It's the it's just the it's just the way you pair that. It's the way you say it. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why you're apologizing for it. It's, I didn't mean to insult him and call him a little robot man. That's nice, because in the future, he becomes a reploid. So you get it right. Call it a reploid. I'll have to figure out what that is. Let me go Google that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No worries. That isn't until the uh, the uh, the X series. So, All right. But no, um, that is pretty much our wrap-up for some of the highlights that we uh, covered on our double 50 show all in, uh, get as time as any to swing on over to MCU yeah lots of MCU stuff this week tons of stuff lots of announcements uh, first up being uh, an announcement that went out over social media this is a pretty funny exchange between uh, Robert Downey Jr um, he's talking about the Avengers Infinity War now set to come out on 427 uh, this is now in line with all the other major release dates across the globe. Now, uh, I I actually didn't I didn't catch this specific exchange. Uh, who started this? Was it Marvel or themselves or Robert Downey? I think Robert Downey Jr. started it, and um, yeah, he was like, uh, "Wouldn't it be great if we could all see the movie sooner or something?" It was something like that. It, I mean, it was very That's... tongue in cheek and fun. And then Marvel was like, oh. "Yeah, sure, anything for you, Mister Stark." And then. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people thought the the, the May fourth release date was kind of off, anyways. Especially this, you know, this May the fourth, uh, you know, yeah. Star Wars and all that. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I heard at some point that a lot of the other release dates were April twenty seventh, uh, in other countries. But um, honestly, I didn't put that together until until I saw this news. Um, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take Avengers a week sooner. By gladly. Uh, th- yeah, this, I, this, you know, cool. This 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 movie 
can't uh, it can't be released any any faster. We're we're, we're dying for this one. So <laughs> no, that's awesome. Well, the well, well, there is no official reason as to why they did this. Uh, the general consensus is because they've seen how well Black Panther's done three weeks in a row, and so they wanted to give Avengers some time to have its three weeks in a row to make some serious money without a lot of uh, competition. In order for them to do that, they had to go back a week because if they wanted three weeks of awesomeness, they that third week would hit Deadpool 2. Ah, so yeah. yeah. So they probably just, that's probably what it is. I, I don't know. I you know I guess they could have always had always had this planned. I don't know. Hmm. Well, so, Marvel there. There you go. Marvel still got plenty of aces up their sleeve. In fact, the very next they day, showed a bunch of them. They did. They did. Uh, the very next day, in fact, after uh, this release discussion, there were six total of six new MCU movie release dates announced for uh, 2021 and 2022. Uh, this is still this is update as of now course there's some things that could shift could change but uh as of right now uh, here's what we're checking out of course uh, as we mentioned avengers infinity war 427 followed up by ant-man that's going to be on july 6th of this year excuse me sir but i don't want the social justice warriors to get on us that is ant-man and the wasp oh right on yes sir you are correct ant-man okay two ant-man and the wasp july 6 2018 spinning on into 2019 it's gonna be captain marvel Followed by Avengers 4 on May 3rd. I want to back up. Uh, by the way, Captain Marvel is March 8th. So uh, March 8th, you've got a couple months gap followed up with Avengers 4. And finally, a few months after that, on July 5th, 2019, Spider-Man 2. Oh, I will and be there. I just wanna... Oh, I know you will. You'll, you're will you going to be there in line in your Spider-Man suit, which is <laughs> yeah. the same one you've had since a kid. I do want to note that Avengers 4 is the end of Phase 3, then the Spider-Man kicks off the beginning of Phase 4. Really important note. Uh, we've had a lot, of, uh, a lot of build to where we've gotten right now with the Avengers Infinity War. And, of course, uh, any new phase puts us in brand new territory. Uh, it's I, have, I actually find this something pretty exciting. You know, we, we've known and watch this Marvel build for so long, and now to kind of be casting our the, the boat out into a brand new sea, man. Uh, I think uh, the end of Infinity War is going to tell us a lot, the direction where all this is going, and of course, uh, uh, what we get in Spider-Man 2, right ends up. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I, and I like the fact that, you know, they're, they're telling us, look, you know, because they're not telling us much, but they are telling us, look, this is going to end. Phase 3 ends with Avengers 4, and then here's how we're starting things off. I mean, we we are we're going to lose some of our favorite heroes at least on a regular basis. We already kind of have for the last couple of years, but yeah. I mean, the chances of an Iron Man four, of a Captain America four, of those characters and those actors even continuing after Avengers four are slim to none. So right. I do like the fact that they're kicking off just uh, two months later. They're kicking off Phase four with Spider Man. Right on. Right on. I mean, you you couldn't ask for you couldn't ask for someone else to carry the torch any any better than him. No, you couldn't. You you you, you really couldn't. Um, Homecoming was a, a great entry, a great return for Spider-Man to the MCU team, and uh, wow, uh, it'll be awesome to see him actually carry the kickoff. So mm-hmm. sweet. Uh, also important to note: 2020 only has one movie confirmed right now. Uh, it's not officially announced, but uh, we know that it's going to be from director James Gunn. Of course, Guardians of the Galaxy three. Looking at uh, there's yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and uh, we don't know which one it is either. There's, no, there's three release dates. We have three officially announced release dates for MCU movies. Um, James Gunn has said that it will be out in 2020, but right. we don't have the date. Right. So uh, a couple of ghost titles here. This this takes me back to early, 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 early on, and some of these early when we were still doing phase reveals. Uh, mm-hmm. for what we were going to be seeing long-term for the next Avengers movie for Black Panther. I remember looking at that chart and saying, oh, man, Black Panther, that's awesome. But that seems so far off. Uh, well, it, it was. It was yeah. like four years. <laughs> yeah, it was. And the fact that now we're here is uh, is just pretty pretty mind-boggling stuff. You, know, you can't look at this stuff in the rearview uh, rear mirror anymore. Well, at that time, I mean, when they when they announced phases two and three, they didn't even announce Spider Man. Spider Man no. was a he was a dream. Yeah, at that point, man. 
No, that's crazy. Uh, besides uh, what we know is coming from James Gunn, there's also a script floating around out there for a Black Widow movie. Uh, some yep. kind of maybe happening in production. Don't know the full story behind well, that. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything official. This is one of the things that was really dragging me today. I was trying to find confirmation about a Black Widow movie. The closest that I could find is that there is a script. Right. Uh, and it is, it is moving forward. And that's that's what I can find out. But I there's been no official announcement about a Black Widow movie yet. But uh, I'm pretty confident. I wouldn't have put it in the notes if I didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, I, and I figured that was a pretty significant point. I mean, with that actually being present, so likely something we can we can count on happening. I mean, Marvel uh, tends to set a road and stick with it pretty well once they dedicate uh, to a project. Most of the time, most than humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't always. Although I do really wonder at this point what the plan would have been with Inhumans. Um, Same. You know, what 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 role they were going to play in the uh, in the MCU at this point. Um, but yeah, I think I think Black Widow will be one of the sooner ones, especially since the script has been around for a little while. Uh, I think they will use that movie to probably introduce my prediction. And if I have not said it officially on the show yet, I guess I will say it now, which is that uh, the Falcon will take over as Captain America. Right on, uh, and he he was a controversial but overall accepted and popular Captain America in here in the last few years when he took over. Uh, of course, he's not Captain America anymore. Now Steve Rogers is again. Now that he's not a Hydra agent, right? Um, and we're not going to go into all that. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's going to be an introduction to that. Uh, I, I definitely want to see. Um, oh crap. Dude, I do this at least once every show. What, What's what? his name? The uh, Arrow guy. Oh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah. <laughs> at least once a show, I for- completely forget somebody's name. I would really like to see Hawkeye play a strong role in that. Um, I think that would be an awesome introduction to actually have. I mean, obviously the Falcon's uh, suit, his backpack gives him uh, the ability to fly and such, but he is a non-powered superhero in fact all three of them are i think that would be a fun way to to kick things off especially after space and pew pew and infinity gems and and all that stuff to, let's you know let's take this down to a kind of a ground level um almost back to your your roots with the original iron man yeah um, yeah you know, very gritty dirty you know humans fighting stuff kind of kind of thing it, with those three i think that would be great and i think we'll get at least two of them uh, i think hawkeye might be the odd man out on that though yeah no, for Which sure. I don't know why he's awesome. He he's like the most underrated superhero in the he, roster. No, he's he's super underrated. Uh, that's I was just thinking back as part of why I was so happy to see him make the cast of uh, Marvel v Capcom three. Uh, he'd been just out of the crossover games forever. He didn't have an appearance in anything, and finally mm-hmm. he had a chance to show up. He he deserves it though. So. Cool, cool, cool. I think that's going to be one of the earlier ones. That'll probably be 2020 because at that point they're, you know, Spider-Man being the last one of 2019, they're really going to, I think they're really going to want to get a head start on, um, on, on a couple movies to flesh out what this new MCU looks like. Right. I think that would be a great way to, to do that. Uh, that. That makes sense. Um, Not to mention that just Scarlett Johansson freaking deserves a, a solo movie, even, even with a couple other characters in it. I mean, just to have a Black Widow movie, that is, I, I get it because they've had their storylines planned out for so long, and yeah. there really wasn't a place to put it, but it, she, yeah, the character and the actress, they freaking deserve it. By by this point, I, especially the, the massive supportive role uh, Black Widow has played to throughout all the Avengers films, to Captain America himself, to Bruce Banner, uh, such an important link to this team. Uh, and it's interesting by this point, you know, we're, we're so advanced in the series that everybody's really had their chance to shine or had their own solo story developed. Um, but you know, she's, she's still sort of in the shadows uh, and you know, it's fine. I really think it's fine for the way things work. She uh, being uh, with her agent status, with, uh, the special skills she has and with her training and, and everything else. I, I think it's fine for her past, her origins to be revealed a little bit later. It makes sense. So I'm, Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not going to harp over that one right now. Um, but no, lots of just lots of cool stuff in the air. You know, there's even talks uh, still of uh, Guardians Four, uh, 
Uh, they, they yeah, still... that would probably be near the end on this list. Right, right. We're still cranking through. So, again, it's it's a pretty even setup. You know, we were looking at, again, three for 2020, uh, three for 2021, and uh, also three films for 2022. Titled. So, good. You know, I, I have to say, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of how they do some of this. So I like how they did it last year, where we got one early on in the year, we got one in the middle of the year, and then we got one at the end of the year. Yeah. And the these upcoming years so far don't show that. Of course, these are subject to change, but these are currently official announcements from yeah. Marvel Studios. Uh, they're not doing that uh, the next few years. We We either have like two in the summer or like a May and July, and then one at the end, or or like one at the beginning of the year, and then a couple in the middle. Eh, what I mean, whatever. I I'm I'm just kind of nitpicking, but right. I liked how they did it last year. I thought the schedule was really good. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, and who knows? Between now and then, you might have some shift, and it, it very well might pan out uh, and, and and spread out a little more evenly to where we do get something like that. But cool. Other news about someone who's a very familiar face to Marvel in the MCU, but it's going to have nothing to do with the superhero movie. This is Chris Hemsworth. Turns out he is slated to play the role in the next generation Men in Black. Uh, This was a report from Variety uh, that uh, he's in talks, at least right now, to play the lead role in the Men in Black spinoff. Gary Gray. Right, uh, director of uh, Fate of the Furious. F. F Gary Gray. Sure, you'll have to ask a fan. But <laughs> okay. that's what that's what I saw. That's what I that's what I read. Okay, F. okay. Gary Gray. Oh, <laughs> Gary. Uh, he also did a was it Straight Out of Compton? I didn't see that. Did you? No, I actually I wanted to see that, but I did not. Yeah, that. I'm, that, I'm old enough good. to remember that music, man. You're not. No. Before my, my oldest, time, my oldest brother. Yeah, my oldest brother used to play that music while my my other brother and I were like, oh, that's. That sounds like something we should not be hearing. <laughs> Which of course meant that we liked it. <laughs> you you got you got in on all the stuff you weren't supposed to see or hear. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, this piece my oldest brother, I mean he was five years older than me, which was just enough to corrupt the shit out of me, so I I'd say I I think it worked. In yeah. a good way. <laughs> I'm happy with it. Yeah, man. I, I, I liked my childhood. Wouldn't uh, we, we wouldn't wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have Jacko here if not? Oh, let it, no, sure, whatever that means. <laughs> with your with your vague arm core reference. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, here's the thing: we were all assholes. So, I mean, by the time I was like 15 years old, my parents were like, "Is he killing anyone? Is he breaking <laughs> into anybody's place? No, then whatever. So let him do what he's doing. All right, we're good. We're good." Um, I, I so yeah when I you know when I get a car I could like disappear for days it didn't matter. <laughs> Man, did you hurt anybody? No. All right. <laughs> they were just so tired after my other two brothers. It's like you're staying out of jail. You know you don't have any felony counts against you. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Get out of here. Get out of here. Let's get out of. Ah yeah. So Chris Helmsworth, he's playing. He's probably going to play a lead role for New Men in Black. I. Show me a trailer. You're not going to get me until yeah. until I see something. The the last two were garbage. Yeah, it's kind of a shame for MIB. I, I mean the the first is 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 pretty classic. I mean I I enjoyed that. Definitely enjoyed that movie. Yep. It, it even gave us the you know the the rote sugar water line. I mean I adore that to this day. Uh, oh yeah, you told me about the sugar water. Yeah. Line. You were going off. <laughs> Uh, here, here's what I will say that gives me does give me a little bit of faith. Chris Helmsworth, and you you got to see this some more in Thor Ragnarok, but uh, you see it every once in a while. You can tell that there's some talent there, but his comedic timing is golden. He's it probably is. one of the best best when it comes to timing in uh, in films right now. So yeah. that does that does give me a little bit more hope. Uh, honestly, though, if I never saw a Men in Black movie again, I'd be fine. So, you know, they've for for me, they've got some uphill climbing to do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's it's interesting with MIB. This isn't really anchored to a specific actor right now or a specific role. I think this is waiting to be really taken and sort of lifted back up in the wings and carried forward. Uh, it, it can be done. It's possible, but 
it's it's going to be take some climbing, take some scaling. So so you can bring back. Uh, oh shoot! Here I go again. Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Oh no, no! If they can, if they can make an awesome trilogy out of those freaking talking monkey movies, yeah. <laughs> uh, what were they called? Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. I was, I knew it was something of the apes. There we go. Um, but they get an awesome trilogy out of that. If they can do that, then they can, yeah, they can pretty right. much revive any. Right. Those were those were horrible. They were great. They, yeah. They're they're classic as far as how horrible they are. But yeah, I mean, but they got a solid trilogy out of that. They they did. They did. It was it, it was well done. I, I think well well executed too. So, uh, for as for Men in Black, we're looking at this for next year. Uh, currently set up for um, five. I think five seventeen. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, right right off in May, we'll see where this goes. The next piece is something that uh, uh, both of us actually kind of collided on. Uh, we both caught this week. Uh, that's the villain. For Wonder Woman 2, and it looks like that's going to be Cheetah. Uh, she was cast. Uh, this is uh, Kristen Wiig. Rawr. Rawr. SNL, Bridesmaids, Ghostbusters. You know, I'm happy about this one. Uh, Cheetah and Wonder Woman have gone at it more times than I can count. Uh, normally, when I see a versus or like a pairing of, of villains that are in Wonder Woman's orbits, it's 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 Cheetah. Always. Uh, so this this could be cool. Uh, more than fine with that choice. Uh Looks like this is uh, got reported in Deadline here. Uh, this is the negotiations uh, for playing uh, Cheetah herself. Uh, this is also a report that the, this particular version of a Cheetah, Cheetah is going to be Barbara Ann Minerva, a British anthropologist who's granted powers by being part of an ancient ritual. And I almost tongue-tied myself and said Vegeta. No, this is not Dragon Ball. Leave that alone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> funny because that sounds like something else almost. <laughs> Yeah, almost. If you're talking about putty cats. <laughs> almost. No, almost, not quite. I'm such a five year old with the lowest voice possible for a five year old. Hey. Uh yeah, I, I you know, I I mean I know who Cheetah is. Um I, yeah, sure. You know, some people they're like you know, Kristen Wig I mean if you if you know enough and if you've seen enough with her, she's got some acting chops. Is it an unorthodox pick? Yes it is. But I, I think it might it has potential and some people are pointing to this you know, this this pick having the potential of being a breakout villain role. And, and I could see that. Right. Um you know, I also saw Ghostbusters, so I wouldn't put money on it either. Right. So Right. Uh but yeah, she's yeah, she's she's a talented actress. I think it can happen. It could be pulled off. But yeah, like I said, I, w- I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it. But I I have confidence in it. Oh, for sure. Uh, Just not much. <laughs> Especially with the history and everything we uh, we already have tabled about that. You know, Cheetah herself has been through a couple of different iterations with origins, and this is a again a I think classic DC issue that that you start to see or. Uh, characters that have been either retconned or their origins, you know, flipped a little bit or modified here and there. Um, Power Girl is another one. Uh, she's been everything from an Altaian to a Kryptonian to relating her powers to magic to yeah, to being a clone. To I could go on, but I'll stop there. Uh, yeah, I could... I'm still trying to understand what a Reploid is. <laughs> You're still I looking for that. I... No, I found it, but I still don't understand it. Uh. Real quick, uh, Reploids are basically supposed to be robots that were created to protect mankind. They are corrupted when Sigma rises up and comes out with a mission saying that Reploids need to rule the Earth, that the time for mortals is done. And uh, then Mega Man X, there we go. Kicks off. And yeah, little, little blue robot man. <laughs> Back just... to that again. I like that. Because he is that, that new one that's coming out this year. He's just a little little blue robot man. He is. He is. Uh, you he's know, a, he's even got a beer gut. I was I was just about to comment. If you go if you go back far enough, now I'm thinking the original Mega Man covers. Now you you do have it's a little robot man with a belly. Little blue robot sure. man. Actually, I could say little. It was more like little yellow robot man with a belly back then. Cause you had that, was that the original cover? You, you, yeah, you had that weird kind of gold-looking yellow outfit, and then like the helmet. You had you had a couple of different contrasting. But I think that's fine. I mean, I assumed that was Mega Man 
using one of the abilities he picked up. But then again, I argue against that because I'm like, wait, you have contrasting colors. When he changes, when he uses an ability, his whole outfit's supposed to take that on. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. You got me looking up Mega Man stuff here. Telling you. Oh, God, yeah, I remember that. That's such a bad cover. See, it's 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 terrible. Uh, Capcom. <laughs> I, I did better in middle school. See? Cross. Man, uh, Capcom poked fun of that when they did uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Uh, that was a, I think, like a special guest character. It was, it was, it was terrible. Such a troll. Did they make this character? Yes, yes, he was in a fighting oh my game. God. Yes, he was. And Mega Man fans were livid about that. They're just like, look, Capcom, really? You do this to Mega for so long, and this is what we get. Like when we finally see him again, I, I think at that point, Mega Man had not been heard from since Marvel v. Capcom two, at least in a fighting game. It's the last time you see. Maybe in Japan, some of the releases like um, the the Namco uh, cross uh, Capcom and those kind of games, and the, the uh, some of the off title crossovers, maybe an appearance there or so. But yeah, mainstream that was that was terrible. That was terrible. Oh my God! Look at this. It is terrible. That is such a troll move. <laughs> oh, Good man. Lord! He's even. He's got a gut. See. Wow. And they put this in a in a fighting game? Yep. Go look up uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken sometime. Good on them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, man. But, Cheetah, Origins, Villains, DC, DC, things. Uh, yep. There have been about... Reploids. <laughs> Reploids, too, yes. There have been about four versions of Cheetah that I know of, at least no the last one of which was a male. Uh, but, yeah, between the New 52 stuff, the DC Rebirth, the original... I, I, and I, I think I think DC's making a good pick here. Uh, the only Cheetah before this was Priscilla Rich. That was in the super early era of DC, the 1940s. Uh, you and, really were a Cheetah fan, weren't you? Uh, uh, sort of, sort of. This was wow. this. This was a. Think you had a little bit of a crush. <laughs> I was not. I was actually not one of those to have a Wonder Woman crush, but I thought Cheetah was awesome. She just made. Yeah, it. you had a Cheetah crush. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she was a good, a good sparring partner for Wonder Woman, and, and a good, I think, antagonist to square her off against. I thought she was cool. So. But uh. I, I mean, I already told you what I know. <laughs> you did. You did. And I'm gonna leave it right there. <laughs> okay. I I guess my point was I don't really have anything else to add because I don't really know much right. about Cheetah. No, no. Fair enough, so But yeah, this was right in the middle of the um the D C arcs and running, so I think they picked a picked a pretty good one. Uh, don't know if they'll how much of the backstory and things like that they'll stick with, but we're gonna find out. So cool. Good pick. Uh I'm going are... th- yeah, and going through, I heard some more rumors about this still being a period piece in the 80s. I don't... Ah, man, get... Uh... I I think Wonder Woman is definitely strong enough on its own uh, as a franchise to, at this point, without having to be that period piece or you know, bringing back Trevor and, and things like that. Um, I hope not. Well, I... to, me, to me, it feels like they, they want to avoid any kind of association with continuing on the DCEU franchise story. Yeah, that's what. So they would go they, they would go period piece again when actually the right thing to do is to lead it with Wonder Woman right now. I'm saying I'm that's 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 what that's what I'm saying. It would it, con- continuity wise. Uh, you know, we we had this this flashback to the early war era and her past and dealing with Ares and everything. I, I just think it would feel just so much smoother to come out of that movie and just, as you said, lead with instead of coming out of that flash and then back into another flashback and then jumping forward again. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh well. What's right. One D? We'll find out. Other than that, Shazam, brand new pick got released. Now, when you say his name, are you supposed to say it like you don't say Shazam? You say Shazam, Shazam, like that. Shazam. <laughs> you gotta have some gusto behind it. You, you can't. Shizzy, shizzy shack. <laughs> Except not like that. Please don't. Shazam. Oh man, there was pictures. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I'm being a dick. There were <laughs> pictures. 
Um, you got to see most of the suit. You didn't get to see the front, but you got to see the guy in the suit. Uh, yeah, what'd you think? Lots of cape. Yeah, but that's kind of cool, though. I, you know, I, yeah, but but his costume generally has lots of cape. I, it does. Um, I'm cool with it. Glad to see a real cape. I, I'm, I'm saying that no, you know, weird crafting behind it. It's, it's, it's this is straight up, straight up cape. But yeah. this. This fits the th- the thing I like about this costume is I look at that and I instantly think Shazam. It's got a ton of recognition. Uh, I, I and I think that's bang on as far as you can ask for. So it uh, looked a little cheese to me, a little too bright. But I mean that could actually be fine, especially considering the character is basically what a ten year old in control of a gigantic yeah. superhuman. And body, so I, yeah, it can work. I, I like the fact that they're going to use the hood because I think the hood is cool. Same, same. Uh, like you said, with the whole ten-year-old complex, I, I think that that actually stands to enhance uh, what we have here. Just kind of play into that uh, bold, kind of overdrawn, you know, big persona. Cool. Yeah. They can. And nice to actually see Cape. This actually reminded me of us talking about it. That I think it was in Man of Steel that there was only five shots where uh, Henry Cavill was actually wearing a real cape, everything else for the cape was CGI. Holy cow, from mustaches to capes, this guy. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that Henry Cavill doesn't even really exist. <laughs> I don't think he's real. I think, I think he's he's a guy in a blue suit. Uh, without a pot they just have people. Yeah, they just have different people play that, you know, that stand-in <laughs> for the CGI. <laughs> Pretty sure he's not even real at this point. He's, uh, he's too he's too perfect looking. I know, and which is why it, he. I was I was gonna say he is. He's even got the Jerry curl, man. Yep. Ah. Yeah, but that's I mean that's why it looked crappy when they tried to CGI that mustache off because his must his mustache was like, <laughs> yeah, right. Like that's better. <laughs> Gotta cover me up. You can't hide this. What yeah. you doing? Yeah. And we'll we and we will see Superman in Shazam apparently. Cool, cool. I, yeah. I stand wholeheartedly stand by Henry Cavill's Superman slash Man of Steel is such a good beacon for DC. He, he's his appearances are always welcome wherever he shows up in. And I mean, it, you think DC? Come on, it's it's Supes. He is arguably yeah. the premier character that you know that this universe falls back on. So I want to see him fight. Oh man, same. And yep. because last time we saw like two super strong super people fight like this was Superman versus Zod, and that ending was shit. Well, it was. Uh, you could say it was cracking. Ah, uh, no, you shouldn't though. You should say he just covered his eyes with his hand because he's Superman, yeah. <laughs> and he should cover his eyes with his hand. <laughs> There's no reason. I'm gonna kill those people if you don't. No, he, he look peekaboo. <laughs> Can't see nothing now. I just covered your eyes with my hand. Your your heat ray does nothing to me. Oh man! Instead, he snapped his neck. I wonder. You know, we see you know how he screams right after. I wonder if like he screams like that because right after he did that, he's like, "Damn, I could have just covered his eyes." Yeah. With my hand. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have to kill a man. Not to mention one of the last surviving people from my planet. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I like Man of Steel, but that was dumb. Same. Same thing. So, yeah, they, you know, have a, have a big old slug out between these two super people and have it be a little bit more fun that doesn't end in murder. Yeah, I agree. Uh, D- DC does this well as far as the, the their battles and, like, the scale uh, of them and everything. And, you know, some of the best ones, even in some of the other DC animations, you know, DC comics, that they don't... Always have a fatal oh, yeah. end to them. They're they're just they're just epic clashes. So, yeah, good stuff. No, agreed. All right. As now f- on to some more not so epic clashes. No, 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 no. Uh, this goes to X Men. A report from THR a little earlier this week uh, that despite Fox's sale to Disney, uh, which is agreed upon at this point, uh, but going still going through a uh, kind of regulation issues for the next 12 to 18 months uh fox is speeding ahead towards train collision over 100 miles an hour uh moving on ahead uh, according to fox executive there is a silver surfer solo movie that's being planned written by comics creator uh, brian vaughn 
Uh, all... well, let's stop right there. Though. Sure. Hold on. Let's stop there. What, what do you think of that? Now, because when we talked about this, you had actually said that if they were going, you know, if they were going to bring a Fox character into the Infinity War, you said that you would hope it would be Silver Surfer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I say that because I point at, well, not necessarily Infinity War. I mean, uh, Cosmic. Uh, when we st- if we start expanding out to that point, and if we start involving you know characters like that, and we're going into the the galactic style characters, or if you look at something like Galactus, yeah, Surfer's who I'd want to see show up. Uh, I like Surfer, I really do. He is sort of the you know the ultimate mo- moper, but not for those reasons. Uh, he <laughs> his power scale is crazy. Uh, he's actually really, really, really overpowered, but. I think he's got a, a, an interesting dynamic of uh, this idea of penance. Uh, you know, he he is he is someone who chains himself more than anything else. You know, I, the fact that even the guy who gave him his own power, he could definitely easily overthrow Galactus if he wanted to, if if he was actually inclined to. But uh, the other reason I say it is because he he got such a brief, uh, just not complete treatment, and when he showed up in Fantastic Four, uh, that that's something that left me wanting. Um, and and I I think. Silver Surfer could could handle another appearance somewhere a little better. So, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, I. Okay, I just I wanted to know your opinion because you'd brought that up. I, you know, this is being written by a former comic writer. Eh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good. No, it doesn't. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Um, last last develop on that. Still, two more X Men movies are confirmed for release uh, this year with three more it developed for 2019 and another three after that <sighs> i you know what what uh, what the what the fuck why <laughs> <laughs> just says fox fox wants some of that mediocre x-men money uh... Just, They're happy with third and fourth place with these comic book movies. Clearly, they are. Just, just, just machine gun that. You just, just spam it. Just, just twenty four seven. Just don't know. Don't let it stop with Logan. Shit. Ugh. Man. No, but who? You know, who knows where we are? See, this is the thing. And if they're, I'm sorry. Go ahead and continue though, because there's because there's, there's more to this. Go no, no, no. Then I'll stop. No, I I didn't have much to add to the nuance to that. I go ahead. Uh, so. <laughs> So I mean, if they, I I don't know because I, I'm of the opinion, and we've said this as we've been hearing about the one with James Franco and the one with uh, the Kitty Pride movies. Like, like these probably aren't going to happen uh, because even if you start production now, if you fast track that bitch, and I mean, you know, give yourself just days to do the script, and it's horrible, then you're still looking at a year of production. Yeah. Especially these, you know, CGI heavy movies. Uh, I just, I mean, I don't think we're going to see most of them. Maybe Fox, in, you know, if you're Fox, I understand because things might fall through. It doesn't look like it's going to fall through with this deal, but I get it. But at the same time, you know, if you're if you're just trying to shove these things in and spit them out, and you put out a bunch of crappy movies, which they've definitely done with X Men movies, and then the sale doesn't go through, well, then you just buried your franchise and then you'll be lucky if you can sell yeah. it to mcu for a freaking quarter yeah yeah it's, there's there's such thing as pummeling a franchise into the ground yeah, look at fantastic four yeah yeah and they only did that with three movies that's that's in the pavement you know here's here's something i want to comment about that in fantastic four too it, it, it's interesting about some of these franchises and movies it's not only a, a death of a group of, of characters potentially sometimes or or keeping you from seeing that film appear again uh, sometimes this this hurts careers period you know uh yeah. that's part of why i was so happy to see michael b jordan uh do what he did in black panther uh and just do an excellent job as, as killmonger mm-hmm. make mm-hmm. a comeback after being you know part of fantastic Four. not everybody comes back from that so yeah he's practically unrecognizable though too this is true this is true no, but yeah, you're right. I mean, so, I mean, there's Logan, and, and I don't know. They said that they may do a sequel to Logan based on all the kids that went to Canada. Right, I right. suppose you can do that with, uh, with X-23. Right. And, and Deadpool's doing well so far. It looks, everything looks like it will continue to do well. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I don't have confidence in, in them. I mean, there's new mutants somewhere. Oh, I did. I forgot to add that part in. New Mutants is getting, uh, the, it's going back in for reshoots. They're adding another character into the whole story. What? Despite the fact that it was done and we were supposed to see it next month. Uh, I don't know. What are you doing, Fox? I mean, Jesus, you get some credit and then you just like, all right. And they could end up doing great. We'll see. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you 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 hit it. You hit it well with the R-rated Logan and Deadpool, and they're awesome for completely different reasons. And they definitely so, show some strength, but you you still made all those other ones. <laughs> and I haven't forgotten, man, because they can't watch most of them. <laughs> I can watch half of them. I can't watch that stupid TV show though. <laughs> no, no, forget that. I'm right with you there. You you, you can't couldn't pay me for that. Well, maybe you could. But I guess, I I guess uh, you know I, it worries me because I mean, at some point Disney will look at this and look at what they've been doing, and you know a lot of people could end up losing jobs yeah. because of this. Yeah. Um, you're already looking at a lot of people people from Fox probably losing their job with this deal as it is. Um, you know. I mean, if I was still Disney, despite the, with Deadpool being an exception, uh, and be, you know, despite Logan, I would still say, cut it all except for Deadpool. Cut it all. We'll 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 build, we'll build the MCU, um, X Men, starting with Deadpool. We'll grow from there, or just start afresh and just insert Deadpool and in, in X Force into the MCU, which you could easily do because every single one of those characters. Uh, is either from, you know most of them are from some alternate past or future right. or something, and Deadpool breaks the fourth wall and says and does whatever he wants. <laughs> so, so you you could do that. I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> stupid fox and stupid face. <laughs> uh, Silver Surfer, though, I got to see a trailer though. Yeah, no, I I, I'm not, I agree. I'm not even excited about it. I agree. No, but hey, that's not all. There's more. Doctor Doom, specifically. Doctor Doom. This is because villain movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, enough hero stuff. Night. You, you got to have a trillion villain spinoffs too. Uh, this is being put together uh, by uh, Fargo and the guy who actually does uh, Legion. Actually, Legion. No, that's uh, Noah Howley. Uh, Legion. Yeah. Legion creator. Yeah, that, that, that that's cool. But uh, I love me some Doctor Doom. He's up there in the top three comic book villains. Oh yeah, period. He's up there hanging out with Joker, who is number one. Um, Doctor Doom is great. Uh, again, not such a great job so far, though. No, no, I just, I just question handling this. I mean, the you know, Doc, Doctor Doom has always had such a close anchor to the Fantastic Four. As you said, he's he's more enough of a villain to. to stand on his own and there is the potential to have some sort of you know, solo release and everything like that but but i just don't like the idea of him being just kind of shoveled in and shoehorned into the you know the ammunition rounds the he's, films being cranked out uh he how does yeah i mean how does it work how, how do you do it how do you how do you make a dr doom movie i mean the origin is tied directly with fantastic four right most of the time right um I, I mean, how do you how do you how do you battle Doctor Doom without superheroes? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, I, you could you could go through some kind of psychological trip, you know, where the the whole he's his own worst enemy trope. But I, I can't I can't buy that one either, man. I mm. maybe it's an origin story where he tries to be a good guy. I don't know. They you know, they have the showrunner for Legion on this which gives me the smallest glimmer of hope because uh, I mean, because I mean there there is a lot of talented stuff that happened to Legion at the same time that show copped out on its premise. It yeah. It did. It did. So you get you get a wink or two and you get some flashes, but yeah. All right, good on you, Fox. But, hey, that's not that's not it. That's, that's not, but wait, there's more. There's more. Uh, this one. Wait, there's more. Fox this, is so good. This one is having a production hell that reminds me of something on Square Enix level. Um, and I think the last time I looked, uh, Channing Tatum was 
I guess slated to play play him. Oh, but, he's, uh, still, he's still attached. He's okay. still attached. Okay, he he's still attached right now. But this is Gambit, the Gambit movie. Uh, it still doesn't have a director. Uh, in fact, a brand, yep. new, a brand new draft of this movie is getting turned in just this month. What does this say, man? It doesn't have a director. It doesn't have a script. <laughs> but it's happening. <laughs> it's got some sets that were created like three years ago. Oh my gosh. And it's and it's got Jenny Tatum. <laughs> I root for this one to fail. I really do. <laughs> just, it's hilarious at this point. This in this in Flash. No, and I don't root for Flash to fail. But there's been so many directors that have come in and out of that that movie where it's, it's just hilarious to watch it at this point. Nice. Um, but this one, this one, I root to fail. I full on root because I'm, I'm not a big Gambit fan either. I mean, fine, whatever. I'm not a hater, but I I don't think the character is developed enough, at least to the common. Uh, movie goer uh, to to be interested in a Gambit movie. He's not a popular enough of a character to your to your common audience to know who or what Gambit is. Right. Uh, his his powers take explanation, and if you don't have you know if you can't explain that in a few seconds, you're going to lose people. Period. Yeah. yeah. Um. I now that being said, my my nerd opinion is that Gambit's really cool and um. He, he can sometimes be a great character, but he's so freaking cliche most of the time. It drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, so I root for this one to fail. <laughs> and I still say we will never see this movie. Uh, Gambit could very well become the kind of like Streets of Rage. You know, there's 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 sets for it. There's there's design out there, as but it never takes off. So. Um, yeah. I'm with you here. I loved uh, Gambit, especially in the uh, original X Men cartoon from the '90s. He's coming Fox. Uh, he had his, of course, he had his own solo series briefly. I liked his couple of appearances he had in some major arcs, like uh, with Phalanx and a few things in the comics. No, he was always cool in that. But uh, yeah, I, not a character I track with a long time over the years, and I I don't trust the handling of him here. So. Not even as a Reploid. No, as cool as that would be. Oh well. <laughs> I still don't know what a Reploid is. You told me what a Reploid does, but you didn't tell me what a Reploid is. I did. I told you they they are they are machines created to protect mankind. Again, you told me what a Reploid does, but you, they're, you they're machines. What, what, what more is. do you want to know? But I mean, are they replicas of something? No. The the name suggests that they're replicas. I mean, they're called Reploids, and even the the wiki I found said that they were replicas of something. Well, probably because they of how they mimic like the. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, probably because of how they mimic humans. I mean, on at least on a okay. mental level. I mean, they're they're they have a lot of intelligence. So, oh, on that at least, okay. they, that's what I always associated with. But I I thought you were trying to tell me that they're based off of Mega Man and like Mega Man was the original, uh, the original little little blue robot man, and so they based them off of him. No, in fact, because um Mega Mega Man is if I understand in my knowledge Mega Man is slim, but Mega Man is not Mega Man X. That's a different robot. Correct. Is now there's some there's some fandom out there about this. Uh, in fact, so much so that a fan game was made linking the end of Mega Man into Mega Man X. Uh X is uh and I, this is actually a fandom I follow as well and, uh, that he is Mega Man many 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 years in the future. Uh, that he is the ultimate version of Mega Man modified by Dr. Light. Um, if you look at the opening of Mega Man X1, though, uh, it could also be argued that he is simply, he's just his own entity. Um, in fact, he's so advanced that he's really ahead of the current tech when he's released hundreds hundreds of years later when he finally awakens. Uh, so his uh, design is unique in that now he not only constantly learns but his, his power grows each game and that was one of the cool things back in the super nintendo days you started off with Mega Man x1 and by x3 and x4 even your normal mega buster was like a lot more powerful than in the first few games and you got to see the blue blast just get crazier each game that was awesome so, so he's hundreds of years ahead of the technology that he wakes up from he had been asleep for a long time he was uh what, shut shut down or whatever 
Yeah, he was put into a stasis because Dr. Light feared that the world wasn't ready for tech that was that advanced. Or for him, period. And he hoped... Well, clearly it. he was right. Yeah, he was. <laughs> and he ideally wanted a world of... Uh, hope that he'd you know, wake up to a world of peace, but he got anything but that. He pretty much woke up to a war zone. Well, that's what he gets for creating a little blue robot man of death. <laughs> you're not, you know, you're not baking cookies in Mega Man X. You're, oh, he, you're blowing stuff up. Right. Right, man. All right. Love it. Speaking of blowing things up. You going to spin us into Star Wars? I got this last one. Hit I it. got it, Ian. You Hit can, it. You can, uh, you can sit back. We're, we're done with Reploids and X-Men stuff, and we're going to talk about Star Wars. And part of the reason why I'm going to do this one is because I have such a passion for the topic, but also because I didn't have time to finish up all my show notes the way I needed to. So I will talk about this. Uh, we had a bunch of Star Wars news come out this week. Uh, some of it was fine. Some of it is shit. Uh, the solo movie was confirmed that it's going to be taking place years before Rogue One. In fact, it was confirmed that the movie will span uh, six years of Han Solo's life, starting from the age of 18 till the age of 24, which at 24 mm. is five years before A New Hope. He's 29 in that. Uh, so we're going to be right in the heart of in between episodes three and four at the the creation of the height going into the height of the empire, which sounds like mm. a lot of fun. Uh, there, there, you know, but there's not really any talk of a rebellion. Rebels kind of shows you the beginning of the rebellion, which was about five years prior, and that's where this movie ends. So there's not going to be much of a rebellion or anything like that. I kind of, I kind of like that. Um, Rogue One did a good job of showing that aspect of of Star Wars lore, and I think uh, yeah. Han Solo has the potential of doing a good job of showing just how freaking depressing it is to be under the foot of the Empire. Yeah, <laughs> this is this with is no not with a fun no place. glimmer of hope. Yeah, no glimmer of hope. There are no Jedi. None of that. Uh, I think it'll do a really good job of it. Good stuff. Um, well, hopefully. Hopefully, otherwise, you know, still the movie could. could no, it, be bad. it 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 could, but you you're you're bringing up what, what's giving me uh, hope for this. You know, I I think this is based in some really strong foundations and some really good world building. So, yeah, cool. Uh the the original draft for the current Star Wars trilogy was confirmed. Now this goes beyond uh, Lucas's original draft and the in the. The notes that he gave them as far as to what he was thinking and where things would go for this current trilogy, episodes 7, 8, and 9, uh, it was confirmed that um, the original plot points for this trilogy very much followed what Lucas gave, gave them, um, which, uh, which to know specifically was that uh, we would see most of Luke Skywalker in 7 and 8 and he was to die in 9. Um, but they they changed it obviously in seven because they thought that Luke was uh, taking up too much of the spotlight, which is ridiculous. Mm. But whatever, seven was fine for what it was as long as we got payoffs to what what was set up, which we clearly didn't. Um, let's see, it was but this this was confirmed. This, it, it was good to hear that uh, the drafts going into this current trilogy were very close to what Lucas had, but also that um, Luke was to was to die in episode nine. This was the plan. Hmm. Was officially the plan. It was in J.J. Abrams' notes. Um, Colin Tuvaro, who was to be the director for episode nine, um, we talked about it months back, where he was taken off the project. Um, just that they were. I, I think did, we just said that they were parting ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was fired. <laughs> Brutal. He was fired. No longer. And that's been rumors for a while. No longer rumors. It was confirmed through multiple sources this week that he was fired because he fought Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson on Luke and Snoke getting killed in Episode 8 because he had big plans for them in 9, as per the original fucking draft <laughs> of this trilogy. <laughs> and he he fought him on it, and they fired him for it. Boy, oh boy. 
But good stuff. That's fighting the. Yeah. It's fighting the good sorry, fight. Sorry, what? No, it's, it's fighting the good it fight. It is. It is. Hey, look, hey, look at that. I mean, you know, because J.J. Abrams did create the the draft for this trilogy. I right. mean, he took the Lucas notes, and they made changes. I'm sure there's all kinds of changes we'll never hear about. It was the 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 rumors that Luke was going to be in most of seven. I've heard about for a while. That that was confirmed, though. So I just like pointing that out. Um, I don't know if that would have been better or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I. Um, I was fine with what they've done, and I know I'm. I don't. I'm not going to say I'm in a minority, but I know a lot of people also feel that they were pissed that we didn't get the reunion in seven, um, that we didn't get Luke in in seven. I I get that. I feel that. I was of the the opinion that look, I'm cool with this. He was still the main part of the story, and we're going to get an awesome payoff in the rest of this trilogy. <laughs> I can't, I almost couldn't say that with a straight face. <laughs> because we we so didn't get that we no. so didn't get that um, yeah so uh, this was interesting and I I want to share this with you and I want to know how you feel about this um, yeah there are a lot of people thinking that there's evidence of a plot that Lucas fo- film is trying to bury Luke Skywalker um, so during during the Star Wars show which is a weekly show that shows on Facebook. Uh, through Lucasfilm. That's their official show. It's about seven, eight, nine minutes long. They talk about stuff that's going on. You know, they'll they'll um, they'll promote movies and rebels and stuff like that. They were doing the rebel recap, and I'm not going to get into specifics about that. But you have the show host um, in Lucas Lucasfilm Studios, and they pass by a picture of Luke Skywalker on the side there. That has a big red X through it. Hmm. Yeah. And um, there, there's no way Lucas can deny it. In fact, they don't because they can't. Because so many people have caught it, and you know they've they've captured it. They can't take the video down. Um. So you know, a lot of people are pointing that. Look, see, they hate Luke. They're trying to bury Luke. Now, somebody did come out. Uh, Stafford and say, yeah, that's at my desk. I'm just a big Empire fan, so I'm not a big fan of Luke. Mm-mm-mm. I, I, I mean, part of me wants to believe that, but part of me also just wants to point at that conspiracy theory and then look at episode eight and be like, look, look at what you did. You <laughs> hate him. You, ki- you killed my, you killed my role model, my childhood role model. You I don't know what to believe. I can see either one's honestly because of episode eight. Either one's feasible. That that could you're right. That's that's something that that's that's got some pliability. I'm one to believe what I what I lean towards though. I'm one to believe the proofs in the pudding by by actions by what we've seen. Right. And I think with what we've got in the table right now with Star Wars, it's it, to me it's a pretty convincing case that you know it's 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 it trying to move move through axe the guy. I mean, unfortunately, it follows a line that we've seen occur in Star Wars films with the with the old Jedi Masters uh, either moving on in some way or another, whether that's through uh, force ghosting, uh, whether that's through actually dying in the case of Vader and others, and then moving on to you know a different plane. Um, that is, that's a sort of line of lineage that we continually see with Jedi. So while it does fit that theme, um, I think there's plenty of evidence on the table that say that's where we're leaning. Well, yeah, I mean, so... Th- and I'm going to try to tie some of this all together now. So you got the stuff with uh, Colin Trevorrow getting fired. So pretty much that means J.J. Abrams will not be bringing Luke Skywalker back in Episode Nine. And also, J.J. Abrams was quoted basically saying that, "Hey, look, if somebody asked him, you know, because of all the backlash over what happened in Episode Eight, uh, has that affected how you're going, you know, your script for Episode Nine at all, or how you're going to be making Episode Episode Nine? He said, "No, not at all." So I don't mm. think J.J. Abrams is going to be fixing this. Although he should. That being said, I'm not totally sure because he's the one that created the original draft that didn't have him die until the end of nine. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't. I I don't know. Oh, it's sad. That's crazy. I can't believe, I, I can't believe we talk. We're talking about Luke fucking Skywalker like this. No. This is. This is the JFK level stuff that starts to take film into infamy, and what we talk about for for years to come. You, you know, the good or bad. These are the kind of conspiracies that start to really craft and shape 
not just one film, but I think an era of film. So that's this is this is going to mean a lot, not just now, but down the road. Oh yeah, no, the, the fallout from episode eight is far from over. <laughs> far from over. Yeah, it's just begun. Um, there were some execs through Disney that said this week that they were they were they regret that they killed off so many people in episode eight. Wow. Yeah, too late. You're not the only one that. Yeah, you're not the only one that regrets it. <laughs> Far from it. Uh, millions, millions. You know, what uh, what did Obi Wan say? Um, he felt a disturbance in the force, as though millions of people had were screaming and then were suddenly silenced. <laughs> so for we're not going, we're not going to be silenced. That was the biggest foreshadowing ever. That's the case, man. Okay, finally, some good some good news about Star Wars. Star Wars Rebels um, they came back a couple weeks ago. Uh, series series finale is next week, ninety minutes. Um, the last two weeks uh, have been good. Uh, for the first time, Star Wars delved it and stuck its toe into time travel um, in in a very I, I would say appropriate way as far as to what they should have been doing with it. Uh, overall, I wasn't too cool. happy to see them do such a thing, but considering what came out of it, uh, we got a good explanation from something that happened two seasons ago, uh, which all made sense. It all wrapped up fairly well. Um, good. Yeah, but Rebels is wrapping up. It's uh, ninety, I think, a ninety-minute episode movie, whatever. Uh, this coming week, I think it's on Monday. I'm not sure. Check your local listings. Uh, a lot of people, you know. Now I'm going to spoil some stuff, and this happened a couple weeks ago. So, you know, <laughs> maybe skip ahead a minute if Plug you don't want to hear this. Yeah, because this this is big time stuff. Because we're talking about Luke Skywalker and stuff like that. We're talking about honoring such a character. Uh, in Rebels, there has been a former Padawan from uh, the days of the Republic, uh, Kanan, Kanan Jarrus. Uh, he gets a Padawan, even though he's not much of a Jedi himself. But he's one of the few, one of the few that survived Order sixty six, and here we see him as a, as an adult. Uh, he's part of the beginning of the rebellion. He died a couple weeks ago in the show, and you knew he was going to, because I mean, you know, Yoda can't say there's, yeah, you know, he's not around for for Obi Wan or for Yoda to help and train and stuff. Not to mention his Padawan. We're not sure what's going to happen with him. Right. But they killed him off, and it was a great send off. Um, this was a well fleshed out character. Some great stories. Even though Rebels a little hard to stomach sometimes, and I get it. Generally, I'm a fan, but um, I get it when people say that you know, there's it's, it's so kiddy sometimes, and sometimes it is. Uh, I I enjoy it for what it is, and then sometimes I love it for what it is. Right. Um. But um. Yeah. No, so they killed him off. Uh, one of the last remaining from the Republic era. Um. You know, he he did his thing. Um. Yeah, you know, it was interesting. Uh, but a lot of people are comparing to the treatment that Kanan got uh, being much better than even what Luke got in Episode Eight, uh, which I can't, I can't say isn't true. Mm. Um, this is leading a lot of people to pointing out again. This happens every once in a while to Dave Filoni, who is the showrunner for Rebels and. Um, he was uh, George Lucas's right hand man for years, uh, and continues obviously to stay with Lucas Films even after it was sold. The guy is he is the Star Wars guru, um, you know. Whereas basically George Lucas had the ability because it was it was his creation. If he wanted to create something off the top of his head and say that's canon now, you're like yes sir. <laughs> uh, Dave Filoni could tell you the you know the guy in the third. Um, you know the the third shot in the cantina in a new hope the the alien that sneezed in the background you know second from the right he can tell you what that character's name was and everything that he's been doing up until that point golly so i'm i'm a fairly big fan uh, i love what he's done with rebels and clone wars overall they those those two shows have fleshed out the star wars universe in a way that um has just it's it's been it's been amazing I, and that's not to say they don't have their flaws, especially the first half of Clone Wars, and especially there are some moments in Clone Wars, but or in Clone Wars, first half of Clone Wars, and some some issues in Rebels. I <laughs> hope I said that right the second time. Uh, but there's been some talk now. You know, hey, look, uh, we think that you know Dave Filoni should be in charge here as far as creative is concerned. 
Um, oh, for sure. Kathleen Kennedy for a lot of the decisions that she makes. A lot of people aren't happy with her, but no one will deny the fact that she's a good producer. Um, but maybe maybe it's time to split the helm and um, mm. and let Dave Filoni do something more here. I would tend to agree, although he's never made an actual full-on motion picture movie. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's nothing that staff can't help with. So... That's a bunch of Star Wars stuff. Interesting, interesting. The, the, the whole thing with Dave sort of reminds me of what Square went through with uh, Tetsuya Nomura, and it's had mixed results. Uh, he was someone who was just cl- uh, exclusively worked on the creative direction, on character design, uh, on, on things like that. He'd never directed a film or anything like that, but they, they gave him the reins to a few projects. He directed advent children directed kingdom hearts and a few other things like that and after some commercial successes they decided to start giving him the whole boat uh so um not as sure where uh dave would go it sounds like sounds like it, this is someone's hands that would be awesome uh for this stuff to fall into my hope is if he does get that if he does get a more advanced role that it'll be uh specific for those projects and that they just don't you know go crazy yeah. with it and overload it because that's what they did to nomura and it made a mess out of <laughs> a couple of games so well i mean here's the thing look when it, when it comes to you know kind of summarizing some of these things when it comes to ryan johnson I, I i am more and more getting that feeling that kathleen kennedy asked ryan johnson to to take a fall on this and and you know she she probably knew you know ryan johnson says well i'm the one that wrote that Luke will die, and I took it to Kathleen mm-hmm. Kennedy and had her look at it, and she was like, I think that's bullshit. I think she wanted him dead. For whatever reason, she wanted him dead. She wanted him out of there. Um, I think she asked Ryan Johnson to do it, and I think that's why he's got a trilogy. Hmm. Like, look, if you do this and you take this heat, we will guarantee you three of the most, you know, three movies in the biggest franchise movies ever known. Or the entertainment. Yeah, ever period. Known. Period. Um, I think, I don't know. That's very conspiracy, conspiracy theory of me. And I don't like to be like that, but it's really starting to look like yeah. that. At this point. <laughs> There's really just a lot of evidence pointing that direction now. Uh, so as much as, as much as I'm not a fan and I'm still not a fan and I give him no compassion and it's just kind of funny because he's, he's starting to get the name now, um, of ruin Johnson. Ruin Johnson. <laughs> Ryan. Yeah. He's, he's saying he ruined Star Wars. Uh, I, I'm I'm feeling more like he's a patsy. You know, uh, tell us what you think. Post uh, post post a comment. Conspiracy? Uh, no, no conspiracy. Ruin Johnson or, or not? I'm curious what uh what anybody thinks about that. So, yeah, no joke. There's plenty to touch on this. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. The the future of Star Wars is. Is not it's not looking great. I, you know, I talk to my brother about this every once in a while, and he's a big Star Wars fan. And you know, the, the way he says it, he says it very different from me. I, I look at things in more of an integral way, and that's not to say that he doesn't. But he summarizes sure. his points by saying, you know, it's Star Wars, it's Disney, and it's Star Wars. You have all the money and all the pull and all the reach in the world to do and buy and own and produce whatever you want. Anyone, yeah. anything. If you want it in your movie, if you want it in your staff, if you want them in your crew, you can do it. And this is what we get. That's what he says. And he's not wrong in that. Mm. I, I I don't look at it quite as it is absolute as that. I mean, it's not always like that. But generally speaking, I think he's right. I mm-hmm. mean, they, you know, they they have the ability to have whatever talent they want for anything for this franchise at least up until 8 up until 8 i don't think there would there would have been an actor there would have been anyone in production in in any form of movie making that if disney would have said hey we need you to do this they would say no i think they would now yeah so wow. i don't think they have i don't think they have that golden ticket anymore i think there's people who would say no now that's um, telling but uh, yeah, I you know the, the you know the most uh, the most unbreakable franchise in entertainment, not so unbreakable, it's showing some cracks. Yeah. And I, after episode nine, I'm not sure where the hell things go. Time will tell. Good, 
Yeah, good luck. Good luck, JJ. Time will tell. Hey, he's, he's got his work cut oh. out for him. Yeah, yes, he does. And that's gonna go. That's gonna start shooting in July. The script is done. That's from last week's news that we didn't have in our ah, uh, in our wrap up there. Um. All right. So, how long was that of me talking about Star Wars? What ten uh, minutes? Fifteen minutes? Uh, a little over fifteen. All right, that's not too bad. Yeah, close to. I want to say we started roughly the roughly the fifty. 50 mark actually more like 20 no right. but yeah, that's I what it is it's a lot of stuff it's a lot of news so and speaking of time it's time for an info minute chris how do you feel about bagels oh boy i'm not a fan why not i'm not a bagel guy now they're too hard really really you ever had um yeah. like like paneras like like fresh bagels Really good. Soft. Won't, won't break your teeth. You, you lost me at Panera. You don't like Panera. You know, you're looking for something here to be relatable, to continue on to your story. You you didn't know that you went down the wrong road, but you really did. Oh, man. You really went down the wrong road. What about, well, okay, look, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep walking down that road. What about Great Harvest Bread Company? I don't even know what that is. What, do they make guns? What? Yeah, man. Uh, Actually, they make molars and stuff. No. Uh, you get bread fresh from the grain each day and it's delicious fresh from the grain yeah literally right. like they start at 3 or 4 a.m grind everything up but uh do you, ha- do you want to start over no i don't okay <laughs> regardless of how you feel about bagels bread or whatever else uh if you had an appetite for bread or even uh specifically bagels sandwiches or anything period i love bread there you go you would have wanted to be in New York City recently. This was at the Acme Smoked Fish Facility on 30 Gym Street. Down in Brooklyn, there was a 213-pound cream cheese and lox bagel sandwich made, which broke the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest, and I repeat the largest, cream cheese bagel sandwich ever made. Now, going back a little bit, this was actually during the middle of February. Uh, this happened. I wasn't aware that this record had been uh, recorded and set, but it's utterly insane just looking at this thing. And here's the cool part about it. Anybody who was there got to share this thing. Uh, so again, the event was held in Ew. It was held in Brooklyn, uh, where the CEO of the company, uh, Adam Coslow, and also uh, the Zucker's Bagel Shop founder, uh, Matt Pomerantz, uh, t- attempted making this monster. Excuse that. And they actually succeeded. Cool. Uh, basically anybody who's there, uh, got a share of this and there was a cut that went out to everyone there. So it was a bunch of mini sandwiches essentially. But if, if you, if you don't like locks, if you don't like bagels and cream cheese, eh, maybe it wasn't your spot, but no, no, I'm not a cream cheese fan. Not that either. Not even on like, uh, like for desserts, like with no man, man, man. cream cheese on dessert. You have you, have you ever, they, they call it cream cheese and it sounds Crackers. like it sounds gross but it's it's really sweet like the the kind that they have on like uh like cupcakes and stuff like that like like cream cheese frosting you've had cream cheese frosting yeah 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 like that and, and that wasn't that wasn't like mayonnaise or anything was it no see yeah i'm not trying to shit on your bagel here so well please don't <laughs> So I like my bagels. How big was how big was this thing again? Uh, two hundred thirteen pounds. What was the diameter though? What was the size? Uh, how wide did this thing go? I can t- try to see if they even had that measurement. And I and I pulled okay, this. I'll try to two separate sources. I'll but. try to I'll try to buy you some time here. I don't know. I'm not sure where to lead on from a bagel, but um, I don't know. It sounds like this bagel should have been in episode eight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's Reploid Bagel. <laughs> oh, man. I got nothing. I got nothing in bagels. Honestly, I've had maybe half a dozen bagels my entire life. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm not a bagel guy. I, I'm a toast guy. And That's no, fair. Not, I don't want a toasted bagel. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah, just, you know, breakfast uh, breakfast food. No. You want a bagel? No. You got donuts? Well, I want a donut. No? Okay, well, then I'll just have some bread. I'll just toast some bread. 
How are you doing? I'm done. And that's that's all I got. I don't have a diameter for you. Oh my god! All right, but it was big, and it was in New York, and hundreds of people shared it. That's icky, though. I they you, up until you said they cut it up first, because then I'm like, oh man, people with their dirty hands just grabbing okay. pieces of a bagel, and now so this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 check this out. I do want to stipulate one thing. That 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 was just the bagel itself in terms of weight. Now, I don't have a diameter. I will give you a new total weight with fully loaded with all toppings on this thing. This weighed over eight hundred pounds. It was eight hundred sixty-eight Holy pounds. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell did they put on it? Uh, lots of salmon, onions, tomato garnish, cream cheese, lox. Uh, specifically. Looks like uh, I'll give you some measurements: eighty pounds of flour, thirty-five pounds of water for the bagel alone, forty pounds of cream cheese, forty pounds of salmon, twenty-five pounds of tomatoes, twenty-five pounds of onions, one point five pounds of capers, and uh, yeah, that that pretty much topped off the the basics. Wow, that's one hell of a bagel. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> insane. <laughs> oh man, did that make you hungry? It does. It does. In fact, I'm short on time. I'm going to pick up something before I run out the door here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go eat. All right. All right. That brings us to the end. Another show, again, for our 50th our fiftieth X2, say. Of course, thank, yep. thank you all for tuning in. Uh, be sure to check out the other reviews uh, that we got up on our channel. We've got uh, uh, Death Wish, uh, a couple other movies, uh uh, Annihilation uh, for shows, Walking Dead. We got uh, Voltron on the way Game too. Night. Yep, and Game Night. Uh, plenty to check out. So be sure to hop on over uh, if you want to know what those were all about, or get a few spoilers and non-spoilers. But until next time, thank you all for listening. We'll catch you soon. Hey, people! Thank you for tuning into this episode and taking a listen. Uh, if you like our content, if you like what you're listening to, there anything to go over. Hey, please! We would not only love to hear more from you, but if great, you could throw some support. You can subscribe right below. Also, you can toss us a line anytime. That's caseonmedia at gmail.com. Uh, of course, you can tune in for our channel anytime for movie reviews, game reviews, uh, a lot of random wacky stuff. Yet, who knows what you'll hear? And of course, our, our episode each week where we're bringing the nerdiest things we can find, dig up, and uh, maybe not find, maybe the stuff that just drops in our laps. But uh, anyway, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. We hope to hear from you again later. Take care. <laughs>